In the back room, our special exhibit, Red Power on Alcatraz, Perspectives 50 Years Later, uh, commemorating the 50th anniversary of the Native American occupation. 50 years ago today, uh, the Native Americans still would have been here after 19 months of occupation. June 11, 1971 would have been the, the end of that occupation. They were, the final 15 were removed by the United States Marshals on that day. At the entrance to the Red Power exhibit, we have a special piece that was contributed by one of the occupiers. Her name is Chris Longoria. She goes by the name Urban Resla. She lives locally. And uh, she did this storyboard. She was out here as a child during the occupation. And she put some of her memories and poems onto this board for the visitors to see. On the other side of the entrance, we have another piece that was contributed by Oops, the Ohlone and the Miwok, who used to fly the bay on these two unique boats. Now, it wasn't the local tribes, the Ohlone and Miwok, who occupied Alcatraz Island. It was mostly college students whose families or themselves had been relocated out here from all reservations all over the country. I think in the first group of 80, you had about 20 different tribes from across the United States represented and eventually they began to call themselves the Indians of all tribes. You can see an art piece in there, a Sioux a teepee. And if we take a, a walk inside here, we can see a photograph of the original teepee that was here on Alcatraz Island in 1970 with a view of the San Francisco skyline. So that was put up by one of the occupiers. And we have this art piece put in here uh, to represent that. This photograph was taken by Stephen Shames. He was a friend of Richard Oakes, one of the original occupiers, primary organizers of the occupation, and uh, the spokesperson early on for the occupation. He was here on the island for about the first three months. Another important contribution came from Ilka Hartman, and she was out here later on during the occupation. She was invited out and took photographs of the last days of the occupation in 1971. We also have a very special slideshow showing in the exhibit area done by Brooks Towns. And Brooks was one of the boat captains, and he helped bring the occupiers over early on in the occupation. So his photographs are some of the very first taken during the occupation. Some of the most important figures during the occupation were the women. And um, this photo, again, by Ilka Hartman of Belva Cartier. She was very early, early 1960s, helping to uh, organize Native Americans. And there was a short occupation in 1964, which she was a part of. And she was also instrumental in helping organize the, the 1969 occupation. Uh, by spreading those ideas. And I also want to point out Stella Leach, who was the nurse on the island. They had a health clinic out here, and a school for the kids. They had a communal kitchen, and uh, were very well organized early on. And the other major contributor to Red Power on Alcatraz is Kent Blancet. Kent is a professor at uh, University of Kansas right now, and he put this exhibit together as he was writing a biography of Richard Oakes called A Journey to Freedom, which he published in 2018. While he was doing the biography, he came across pieces of memorabilia and artwork that he put together into an exhibit called Not Your Indians Anymore that went to a few sites around the country before it made its way here to the Red Power exhibit. The other part of the exhibit that I included was a cultural space for Native American cultural activities. We had a few on the island before we closed down for the pandemic in March 2020, and then we moved those events online. So in partnership with the San Francisco Public Library, you can see some of the events, including one with the, the uh, women of the Red Power Movement and the occupation. The reason we wanted to add a cultural space here inside the exhibit room is because 50 years ago, that was one of the main goals of the occupiers, was to build a Native American cultural center and a Native American university out here on Alcatraz Island. 
Now that never happened, but we are actually planning now a cultural center uh, here on Alcatraz Island with the Indians of all tribes. But this is a very exciting uh, moment that we'd be able to help them achieve that goal 50 years later.